So, welcome to Scott Moulton's talk. Scott's from uh, myharddrive.die.com. He's a uh, expert on data recovery, which interestingly enough leads him to be able to do a lot of forensic works. Or forensic works. So when you all get popped, he'll probably be the one looking at your hard drive. Just keep that in mind. Buy him beer now ahead of time. Um, but let's give a big round of applause for Scott. He's got a great presentation coming up. Just, just a kind of a quick show of hands. Who saw my speech from last year? Okay, that's pretty good. Because this one's kind of like the part two, but it's, you know, like let's follow a theme kind of thing. Last year I kind of did the talk on the general things that you can do with data recovery on the hardware side. I don't really focus, uh, at least in these talks right now, on the software side. I focus mainly on the primary things that are hardware related that may not be specific to your OS or what version you're using, because I do all of them. I do Mac OS, I do Linux recoveries, uh, RAID recoveries, whatever is necessary. Um, and then obviously doing data recoveries and running a data recovery company keeps me really hot on the topics uh, dealing with forensics. And coincidentally, one of the weird things that's starting to happen in forensics is that hard drives are being made crappier than they've ever been made before. So we're starting to see a lot more failures actually on the job. Like you actually have a lot of bad blocks on drives when you're out there trying to do an image and trying to recover it and take it back to your office and work on it or whatever you do. How many people do forensics in here? Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so I'm trying to focus on the things that I might do as a forensics person when I'm out in the field trying to do those recoveries and trying to help you guys at least come up with ideas and answers to get those images done because a lot of forensics guys just can't get the image done if there's actually some failure with the drive and in a lot of cases they have to. They got to figure something out. So I even try to handle like a forensics department in data recovery so that if we have a special hard drive that we need to reassemble but it still needs to be acceptable in court we try to do that. Um, but real quick before I get into the hard drives I've been starting to deal a lot with uh, SSD drives and flash memory sticks. Um, there's still it's kind of a lot like it is with hard drives where there's very little information that is very detailed in what's actually happening and I've been trying to build those contacts and trying to get answers and I've gotten a, a few answers from a couple of guys at SanDisk and a couple of other companies but for the most part, anything that's related to like trade secret stuff or how they're doing wear leveling, it's all hidden. You just can't find it or no one's going to tell you. The white papers in some cases have inaccurate information in them or they were written in you know, 1998 before M Systems was bought by SanDisk. Uh, there's been a lot of different things along that line that affect our doing a data recovery. Uh, how many people have had a flash memory stick like die on them and had to try to get data off of it? How many people were successful at getting the data off of it? Yeah, that's a little less of a number there. Um, and it, just real quick, I mean, how'd you do it? Did you have to rebuild it, like resolder chips on? Okay, so it's uh, software side. It wasn't hardware side. Okay. All right, so that, that's lucky if you can do it with the software side. A lot of times, dealing with hard drives and things like that, as you well know, there's sometimes that you just can't deal with things that are the software side. So. Basically, I'm going to kind of go into uh, the structure and what happens with the flash memory chip. And a standard memory chip, almost every single thing is actually in existence on the memory chip itself. The control chip, there's always been questions about what actually happens in the control arena here and what's actually on the flash drive itself. It's still a fairly dumb device. It basically does some basic like ECC checking to make sure that the block that it just wrote is actually a good block. Uh, the idea of wear leveling uh, is a, I'm going to use every block on the chip before I write anything else to another block that's already been written before. So in other words, like an erase cycle. The thing about flash is that you have blocks that are divided up by the hardware when the chip was manufactured and made for this particular device. You have to erase an entire block at one time. So if you say have two files that fit in a particular block and one file was deleted, the second file that exists in the block is going to keep the first file from being deleted. So even though the operating system and what you might normally do in forensics where you're actually going to try to recover content that's been deleted, you won't see it. It's kind of like a virtual OS. Now in the control chip, the control chip basically controls most of what actually happens based on driver calls. So almost everything that you see here in this particular diagram ha actually happens in a driver. It does not happen in the chip itself. The chip is not really smart enough to do much more than move things around and go through like a garbage collection routine based upon what 
the wear leveling schemes are asking it to do. So in this particular area where you see this block of uh, items that's called the true FFS, that is the area that is uh, basically controlling how many times that you're going to write over a space before a block can no longer be used again. The blocks have a maximum amount of time they can be erased. Your life cycle is basically about 100,000 writes. So most people actually put content on their flash drive, and then they don't erase the file. They just basically keep rereading it. And so this doesn't put any kind of limitations on your reading. It only puts limitations on your write cycles. So true FFS is supposed to basically move the files around so that you can do an erase on a block and maintain a longer lifespan for a sector or a block before it is destroyed. Uh, now, the big deal here is that in some cases with SSD drives, which are the solid state drives, they're just now coming around. I actually have a laptop that has an SSD drive in it. Do, does anybody know what an SSD is? It's basically flash in the form of a hard drive. Right, a solid state memory device. So the whole point is like you can take your laptop now and you can shake it or something and not have to worry about the head whacking the, the platter as the drive is spinning. It also uses a lot less power. The issue is with SSD devices is for the most case there is no actual driver. Um, that apparently is not true with like hybrid drives or something of that nature. A hybrid drive is a hard drive that also uses memory. It's a combination of the two that are added together, and there's support for it in Vista and things like that for the five people that are using Vista. But <laughs> outside of those people, um, SSD is basically your other choice. And right now, say for instance, a SanDisk SSD drive that's about 32 gigs is about 600 bucks. Uh, there are other drives that are about the same that are faster capacity, faster, higher end capacity uh, that are in the $2,000 range. And this is just for the drive itself. But you have some added uh, bonuses there, which are that you drop your drive, you don't lose anything, your head's not whacking the platter, it's a lot faster, and you also have uh, better battery life on your laptop. So right now, my Sony is getting about five hours of consistent and constant use while you're sitting there clicking on the mouse itself while you're using it. There's kind of a downside, though. Uh, certain manufacturers, like SanDisk, um, there is an additional socket there's something called a ZIF socket. So if you take your SATA drives and your PETA drives in a smaller laptop like a subcompact, you'll have a ZIF socket. So you'll have like a 1.8 inch hard drive that has a ZIF socket on it. And there's two types of ZIF sockets. But SanDisk saw, uh, for some reason, decided to make their 32 gig ZIF socket drive a master only. So if you happen to have a laptop and you decide to a uh, SSD drive in my laptop because it's going to be really cool. You need to find out whether or not your CD-ROM shares the same IDE controller because when you put the SanDisk drive in, it's going to disable your CD-ROM drive because it's master only. You don't have a jumper. You don't have a way to change that. So just to kind of help you not make a mistake and not have a CD-ROM in your uh, laptop, uh, you need to pay attention to that and make sure that you actually have like two IDE controllers and that what you're plugging in is not going to stop the other one from running. Um, in the case of flash memory, when we're doing a data recovery, most of the time it's the same kind of thing that we're going to have to do with a hard drive. We're going to have to find an identical and exact match for the type of drive that we're going to fix and replace. And basically at this point in time, you're looking at unsoldering the chips from the board and replacing them so you've already got to remove the good one and actually get rid of the chips off of it and then solder them back on. And I have a fancy soldering gun, so I'm sure that... All of you have that one that does it that quick. Uh, it is very, very difficult to unsolder these things. Heat is a real problem, and uh, I'm getting better and better at doing this, but ultimately the whole point is, is that all the content that you need for your operating system is typically on the chip itself. The big deal is whatever the control chip is doing to uh, write the content, making sure that the firmware and that the model is exactly the same because, it's again, it may be... I'm going to write a block someplace else on a different model. So you have to be really cautious about dealing with those flash drives. You can, re you can rebuild them and you can replace them. 